All right. Thank you. Go, yeah, go. Yep, take it away, Sabrina. All right. All right, so hopefully everybody can see, um, um, it says Follett Discover and Faculty, and this is the PDF that should have been sent out to all faculty, and it's just an overview of that on online system of where you can place your textbook adoption if you choose to. I do want to mention that this is just one of the places where you can um, place an on, or where you can place a textbook adoption with your bookstore. Um, so you have this fall discover online adoption tool, but you can also email the bookstore, you can call the bookstore, or once everything opens back up, you can go visit the bookstore and say hi to your new managers over, the new um, textbook manager and store managers over there if you'd like to meet them. Um, so I do want to say this is just a choice. You don't have to use it, but it can be a really good tool as well if you want to try it. Um, so to log on to um, Follett Discover, you go into your, you log into your Canvas using your Los Rios credentials. And then on the left-hand side of the screen, you're going to see all of these different options to choose from. And you're gonna to wanna to look at the, look for the Follett Discover um, link as well. So you're gonna double click on that Follett Discover link. And then it should open up a new tab or window for you to view um, this website. Uh, you may need to allow pop-ups or disable your pop-up blocker in order for it to work. Um, and then you just click the, or you choose at your faculty, and then it takes you over to the site that I'm going to move over to now. So I'm going to stop sharing that one. And I'm going to move over. So this is what the site looks like when you log into it. I am going to mention that this is um, the website that we use to help train people on. So um, it does have its limitations and we have noticed through these trainings that there are a couple of things that haven't worked exactly right, but it will give you a really good overview of what you can do with this system. So um, in order to adopt on this tool, you do have to be the instructor of record for the course officially. So if you log into your Canvas and you can do anything with those courses, um, regardless of being on Follett Discover, you should be able to also adopt um, through Follett Discover on this. Um, if you aren't officially registered for the classes, we do allow faculty to place textbook orders still, but you'll just have to use one of the other methods that we have available, which is calling the bookstore, emailing the bookstore, visiting the bookstore. So um, on this, uh, it shows that I am teaching um, three different classes, bio, history, and math. Um, you can select the term that you are adopting for. So you can view past terms if you wanted, if you had past information in here, and I understand you guys are new to Follett, so you um, wouldn't necessarily have any information in there from past terms because we weren't able to upload past information, but going forward, you will be able to view past terms, um, starting with uh, summer 2020. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the spring 2020 term. And that's gonna be the term we're actually going to um, adopt titles to today. And I do apologize, my email, I'm sorry, my internet is running just a little bit slow today. So I just wanna do a quick overview of what you see on the screen. Um, this My Courses link, this is how you get back to this page. And then there's a My Library link, which we'll go over a little bit later. There is a search feature up here that you can use at any time. Um, so you could type in an ISP number to, um, to look at a title and then from that screen you can adopt to any courses. Um, if you want to share your textbook information with anybody else, you can um, click that button and you can email that off to anybody that you choose to. You do not need to email this information to the bookstore since it is uh, um, delivered to us electronically already. All right, um, so right here, um, so for each of these courses, it says we haven't adopted learning materials for this course yet. This information gets updated as we do adoptions. So, sorry, as we add in information. So the first thing we're going to do is one of the easiest things 
that we can do, which is I'm going to let the bookstore know that I am not going to use any textbooks for my Bio 2215 course. Um, and that means I don't have any required or recommended titles. Um, this also means that I don't have anything that I'm going to be using via um, OER, which is Open Educational Resources, or that I don't expect students um, to be purchasing anything for my course whatsoever. So I'm just going to click on this link right here that says I have no materials associated for my class. And then it changes um, the message to nothing required. Uh, but just another reminder, it means nothing required or recommended, even though it says just required. All right. So for history 2215, um, if we're going to actually adopt a title to this course, but I want to show you one other function before I do that. I want to show you the manage my section and if you are teaching say two sections of history 2215 but you um but you want different adoptions for each of these sections that is when you want to do the adoption by manage by section so you would just click this link here and you say yes i want to separate these sections out and if i have if I am teaching more than one, or if I'm associated with more than one section of this course, um, I have a box listed for each of these sections. So I'm only associated with one section um, of this class, but the section information now appears below history 2215. Okay. All right. Um, so, oh, one other thing I want to mention about the manage by section is a bookstore will typically only adopt the books for your um, lecture section if you're teaching a lecture and lab class. So one section's a lecture and another section the lab. We try, we tend to put the adoption in your lecture section and mark your lab section as no text required. If you specifically need something associated with your lab, say there are six different labs associated and only your lab section uses something and we need students to know only that lab section uses it, we can absolutely adopt under that lab section. Um, you'll just need to let the bookstore know that that's how you would like it to work for you. Okay, so let's get into adopting a title for the class. Um, sorry, I'm just going to pause for one second. Uh, I will be right back. Sorry about that. It was a little bit more noise on my end. And it should stop in just a second, but I am going to go ahead and continue. So we're going to adopt a text. Um, it's Maculay's Motel of Mysteries. And I'm going to click into History 2215. And um, you can click into discover for this course, but what I like to do is I like to actually use this search um, bar up here because I tend to have, um, it seems to work for me more often. I don't know if it's just maybe a glitch in my training um, side, but um, this is the one I tend to use. My ISB number, I would type it in, but I've used it so many times during my trainings, I'm just going to select the one and hit go. Um, when you are searching for a title, the easiest way to find that title in our system typically is by ISBN number. But that's not the only way you can search for a title. You can search for a title, you can search for a book um, with its title, with its author, or if you're just looking for something, you're like, I know the book is called um, is called multi-psychology. And so you could type that in, so you could search by keywords. Um, unfortunately, you can't search by subject though. All right, so the title that we found was Motel of Mysteries by typing in the ISBN number. We're gonna click view details on this text because just searching for it doesn't adopt it for your class. You do have to click into see details. And it's gonna give you more information about the book. We can see um, on this one, we can actually view the table of contents. Um, the title, this format is going to tell us what type of book this is. So this is a paperback, but if it's a hardback, 
if it was a loose leaf book, if it is a, um, a digital title, so an ebook, um, any authors that are associated with it, who the publisher is. There's a 13 and a 10 digit ISB number listed here. Just to let you guys know, those two different ISB numbers lead us to the exact same textbook. The only difference between a 13 and a 10 digit ISBN number is um, the 13 digit will have 978. The next um, eight number, nine numbers will be exactly the same. And then that very last digit, which is called a check digit, might be different. So that's the only two, that's the only two differences between um, the, the different ISBNs, but they lead us back to the same title. So if you're doing a search, you can do a search by the 13 or you can do a search by the 10. And then it gives you a description of the book as well. Um, underneath those stars are just saying like how it's been rated by other faculty. And then um, this rental um, little key right here. And then if there's an ebook, um, it'll say Brightwave or Adobe if, there, if we know of an ebook that's associated with it. But this one is available as a rental title in our bookstores. So I think one of the greatest features um, by using this Fall at Discover tool is um, the fact that you can now see the bookstore's prices before you adopt a textbook if you so choose. So this title is $13 new, um, $9.75 used, and it's also available to rent. So I can click over to this rent button and see that you can rent it for $8.45 new or $5.85 used. The um, green highlighted one is going to be the cheapest option that we have available to the students. Um, because I use that um, this search feature, um, I do have to enter in what term I'm adopting for. So I'm adopting for spring 2020, even though I understand we're going to the fall 2020 term. Um, and then I'm adopting this to history 2215. And then I'm going to select the usage for this. So I have three different options here. I have required, recommended, and choice. You only want to use choice if there is a choice between two different titles, so or two different options for that same title. Um, sometimes faculty get this confused with um, offering it as a recommended, like it's the choice if a student wants to purchase this specific book. That's not what we mean by choice here. We mean choice by you can purchase this textbook or this textbook, or you can purchase the same textbook as a third edition or as the fourth edition. You can purchase the access code by itself, or you can purchase the access code in a bundle. Um, so those are different ideas of what choices are. Um, this one I'm gonna adopt as a required text, and then to adopt it to the class, I just hit adopt. And then it should take me back over so to History 2215. And I can see that I now have requested the bookstore to add this title to my class. And you're going to see this pending status right here until the bookstore finishes everything on their end. So what we do on our end is we take a look at the title that you've requested and check to make sure that this isn't um, an old edition, if it's an old edition, we try to notify the bookstore, I'm sorry, the instructor that um, this is an old edition and if there's a newer edition available, if we're able to get the older edition. Um, so we won't just make an assumption that uh, you know this is an old edition unless you specifically let us know. I know this is an old edition, this is one I want to go with. We'll also look to see if there's other options available possibly for this book. So um, if there is an ebook associated with this print title, our system automatically adopts that ebook over to the class. So that's kind of a nice feature um, in our system. Um, we, if it's um, a textbook that typically contains an access code or you've, you've requested an access code, we will do the research to see if there's any other options available. Um, maybe the publisher can work with us on getting a discounted bundle in stock that contains the access code and the textbook. So we do try to do all that type of research before um, completing the adoption on our side. And once we complete the adoption, what that does is it makes it viewable on our website 
um, so students can view that information. It also, um, students can also view this information through Canvas, just like how you can view it through Canvas, but students can't view this title until the bookstore completes it. Once it's completed, there'll be a completed um, tag up there instead of a pending tag. Um, if you wanted to delete this book, you're like, whoops, I actually don't want that. All you have to do is hit that X button right here, and it'll say remove this material adopted to the course list, and you would say yes, and then um, you would, it would take it off of the list. All right, um, I'm going to add, we're going to search now for a title based off of the author instead. So Turabian, I'm gonna hit go. So I'm looking for Turabian, the manual for writers. And um, the reason why I recommend searching by ISBN number whenever you can, if you know, if you have the book in your hand, um, that's the best way to guarantee that's the book the bookstore gets for you. Um, but you'll see when you just search by the author's last name, um, the Travian Manual for Writers, um, ninth edition, um, but this is the hardcover that comes up. You, um, you may not know that there's a paperback version available. And so I went, just went to page two, and now we have listed on here um, the ninth edition again, but this one's the paperback. And then... Um, this one right here, same exact textbook, Manual for Writers, but this one is the seventh edition. Um, so this is a paperback. So say you adopted the hardback um, for your class. The bookstore should hopefully catches this and lets you know that there is a paperback version available and, um, and asks if it's okay if we adopt the paperback version instead of the hardcover um, to help save your students money. But we do try to offer as many choices to students as we can if the choices make sense. But we do typically see that if we had the hardcover and the paperback adopted, 99% of the students go with the, um, go with the paperback, the cheaper option. All right. So this title, I'm actually not quite ready to adopt for my class yet. It's one I'm thinking about, but I don't want to have to look it up every time I go into my adoptions. Or maybe it's a book I'm going to use every single semester, so I just want it on my, um, I just want it to be available to me and not have to search every time. I'm going to click this button right here and it adds it to my library. So now what that does is um, instead of when I'm in my courses, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to adopt. I'm just going to go over to my library tab. And any books that I've saved over to my library, they're going to be listed here. And so um, you can also save books in your library based off of what classes you used them for, for even easier ease of searching. So you just do that by adding it to a shelf. You create a shelf, and I'm going to say this is used. Ah, I always do that. Um, add history 10, um, save. And so now I can either view all of my books in my, on my, sh in my library, or I can just view the books I have saved to history 10. And then super easy. I go in, click adopt and um, do that whole process of selecting it to um, my term. It's just in a different spot this time. And then I select what class I want to use it for. This is once again History 2215. But I do want to make it recommended to my students and then I'm going to click Adopt. And it's listed there and as pending. All right. Um, I know some faculty are also interested in um, our OER resources as well. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, we're going to go into Math 2215, and we don't want to leave a rating for we, we haven't used that book yet. And I'm just going to do a search up here for mathematics or for algebra, free algebra. And I'm going to hit go. So this is going to search for anything that pre-algebra is in its title. 
but I don't want an actual textbook for this. I want to see if I have any OER resources. So I'm going to go to this OER tab and everything, so anything we have listed as an OER um, and has pre-algebra in the title should come up for this. Um, you can view the details of this. So this is a pre-algebra pre book by um, Merlot has put, put it out. I can view the details of it. It gives you a description of it. Um, you can view the table of contents. You can also do a search by ISBN number if you want, if your OER material actually has an ISBN number. Um, you would just click up there and then click over to that OER tab. Just to let you know, OER information isn't necessarily sent over to the bookstore the same way as a textbook is, is, is sent to us. Um, I do believe we get a notice that you've adopted an OER material for the class. We just can't see what that is. Um, if you want the bookstore to list the website that goes along with your OER material, I believe you guys are just emailing um, the textbook manager for your store and giving them that information. And um, they can, uh, they are limited to a certain amount of characters that we can put in our notes um, where students can see um, textbook information, but um, they will try to add in the best note that they can to let, um, so your students are aware of the uh, material for the class. Um, same thing for adding in any supplies to your class, say you want a calculator. Um, you can just type in calculator, go to supplies, and any of the calculators we have listed in our system, um, you can view those and you can add that to your textbook adoption as well. Um, all right. If you are looking for a book but the system's not finding it, you can also go into the class that you want to adopt for. And um, down at the bottom of the screen, there's add a title. So add a title not found in your search results. You just hit add and then put in as much information as you can here. So author, title, publisher, edition, copyright date 13. And then in the description, you can write to the bookstore like, um, I was looking for this text, but I couldn't find it with mastering or with connect, or I couldn't find it as just the print version alone. Um, and the bookstore can see that note that you send them and, um, and work, for, work with you from there on that. Um, if you are creating a, if you have a, like a lab manual or a reader for your class, I believe uh, the Los Rios schools are using LAD as their printer for any of the readers. And I would recommend not using this site to create your readers, but to uh, just directly contact your textbook manager um, and work with them directly on getting that um, worked out for the class. I do know that any of the information that the bookstore or so that if you had already previously placed a textbook adoption, um, that information was given to us, and so the textbook managers are working really hard to get all that information into our, um, into the new system so it's viewable and can be ordered for your classes. Um, even if you didn't use Follett Discover to, uh, um, to order your textbooks from the bookstore, once the bookstore completes an adoption in our system, so completes an order in our system, it, um, it uploads it to both our website and to this Canvas site. And so if you're registered for teaching that class, if you're the instructor of record, um, you can still go in and view what books um, the bookstore has associated with your class if you want to do a double check and make sure that we got that information correct. And it's something I recommend that all faculty do is go in and double check our work because unfortunately sometimes we do make mistakes. We really try hard not to, but we um, try as hard as we can to not make um, mistakes. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I didn't miss any of these other buttons. Um, so it's the add a title, is that that's where you would go if you couldn't find it in the search function. And then um, the create content, I'm recommending you know, don't use that for right now since I believe if you, Create a content through here, it goes through Xanadu, and I believe the Los Rios schools are currently using LAD. Um, 
this one right here, if you want instructions just so you're um, for about your course materials usage, this just goes to your students. So if you want to type in a note to your students there, just your students see it, the bookstore doesn't see it. If you want the bookstore to um, put in a specific note, you can email us up here. It says man I'm sorry, message center. And then you say contact campus bookstore. You can um, say, I'm letting my students know that they should purchase this by the second week of classes. That way we know um, the expectation for your students as well. All right, you can also type in any other questions that you have to the bookstore through this method or through the contact information that you received in that initial email. All right. Paul, is there anything else you wanted me to go over? No, I think that that's pretty good. I mean, we could, uh, maybe you, you, it looks like you've touched on, on uh, pretty much every basic feature that, that I'm aware of. Um, I think we can go ahead and some, some of the questions have already been answered, but we can, we can work through some of these questions now. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the, the, one of the questions that, I was just mentioning that, yeah, if you if you previously submitted your adoption or, or you submit it via email or you call it into the bookstore, it, it like you said, it'll still once it's input, it, it it'll still show up here if you in in, in uh, follow discover if you wanted to go back and review it. So that answered that question. Um, um yeah. was that the one that was asking um, if the book specifically adds to your library? No, this was this was uh this was Dan, Dan just put that out in the chat. So, okay. Um, yeah, he just and then just at, you know asking if yeah if, if you put not if you put nothing required in in follow discover that's what's going to show up on the on the bookstore website as well because it's gonna yeah wh whether you adopt or, or you put no books no books required for the course it'll show up to the student on the the website. When they go to purchase their books, yes, it'll. So, um, if an instructor says, like, lets us know nothing is required or recommended for the class, it'll say no text needed for the class. If the instructor doesn't tell us um, any, if tell us any information about the book, it actually says information has not been given to the bookstore. Yeah, so I guess that, that that goes back to if, if you don't if if you're not if you don't have any any adoption, you you still whether whether or not you have you're planning to adopt textbooks or not, you should still should still go through and review your classes and you know submit that there's no textbooks required required, so that can be clearly communicated to the to the students. And I, Dan, I'll let you win. I don't I don't want to you know I, I don't want to step outside of my lane. <laughs> no, that is it, the reason I'd ask that is because. Um, and then nothing required definitely then it does translate to saying no no textbook required for the course but it is frustrating uh, on the other one that you mentioned um, if if nothing has been sent to the bookstore period it says uh, no materials have yet been determined for the class which is just uh, it's kind of up in the air you know the student doesn't know whether truly that means nothing has been required for the class or it just means that it has not been, the uh, textbook request has not been uh, processed yet. So <clears throat> that's really a push from my faculty colleagues to make sure you get in your, your textbook orders as soon as possible so that we can get rid of that not yet determined uh, designation and either have it say, this, this is the textbook you need or you don't need a textbook. I hate that uncertainty about the not yet determined. And then, uh, Sabrina, the, the question about the first one was, uh, you were taking, you know, you were saying, uh, follow, using Fallout Discovery is one of the choices that, that a faculty member can do. They can also email or call the, the uh, college store directly. But I was just curious, when a faculty member does email in um, the textbook request, is there, a, is, there, is there at any time that that information from that email is then put into the the template for Fallout Discover or, or, or into the My Library? Or, uh, how does it happen that the next semester, if that faculty member wants to use the same thing, do they have to email again or does it somehow reside someplace in the, the Fallout atmosphere? Okay. So it doesn't matter how the bookstore receives the textbook order from the faculty, as soon as um, it's completed on our end, the information is pushed into Canvas. And so um, any of them that we're doing manually right now, if an instructor goes in, 
they can view the courses that are currently adopted to the fall semester. So if they wanted to um, save any of those books to their library for future use, they just click on the titles um, and, and add it to their library. Okay, but that's something that they would need to do to, to, to save it for, for future reference. They can, they can also go back to a previous, so say they forget to do it this semester and then next spring they're like, oh man, I wanna use the same book I used for fall. <laughs> they would just go to the selected term here and then go to past terms, select that, uh, all the textbooks okay. are still listed there, um, and then they could add it to their library and then from their library, push it into their fall, or to their next spring adoption. Super, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so we have a couple of, yeah, so that, I think that kind of answer, I, I'll, I, we've got a couple of hands raised, so I'll go in order that I just saw them come up. So Angelina, I'll go ahead and, you can go ahead and uh, ask your question. All right, I have a couple quick questions. So first of all, does the Fullet tool read the course cap? Because I didn't see any place normally at our school, faculty had to enter the approximate you know, number of books needed. So Fallet gets an import from campus that tells us the um, expected enrollment for the class. Okay, great. So if you think that enrollment is going to be different than the expected enrollment, you can send a message to the bookstore saying it's, it's probably going to, you probably see 30 on your side, but it's going to increase up to 60. Okay, great. And then my second question was, when you were adopting for this uh, history course in your example, you broke it out by section. If you do not break out by section, it orders the same content for all of the sections that an instructor is teaching, correct? That is correct. Okay. And then my last question would be, because we've actually had this happen, um, <laughs> it happens every semester, if schedules change, and a, the new instructor for a course looks at the tech, will they have access to see what the previous instructor ordered and can they then use the little X for delete after the order's been completed, after it says completed instead of pending? So as soon as the instructor, is, like the new instructor is officially given the course and so they're able to do anything that they want on their side to, in Canvas to that course, um, that information, our, our book information also transfers over. So, okay. yeah, they can do it at that point. Um, but say an instructor is, um, is given a course and it's not official in the system yet, mm -hmm. um, that instructor could view what was adopted for their new section on the Follett's bookstore's website if they want to see it before it hits campus, before they're able to get to that information. Okay. And if they Fantastic. Want to, and then they'd be able to change order if they wanted. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. Okay, so go ahead, Martha. You had a, you had a question. Um, yes. Um, I wanted to just clarify. Um, so if, because it typically happens in our division that the same instructor will use the same textbook semester after semester. So you did show that um, if they wanted to see what they ordered in the previous semester, they could go to select term. But do I understand correctly that they can't adopt straight from that page, that they have an intermediate step to add the previous book to their library and then they can order from the library? Correct. Okay, that's not really clear on the PDF um, instruction sheet that we got, so you might um, want to clarify that. Okay. Um, so that, that I, I, when I read that over, that really stood out to me. Okay, and it's possible that there has been an update to the system since I have initially started training on it, um, but we will absolutely check in for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, then Martha also had a question on uh, on what what LAD is. Uh, I know that's oh. um, LAD is as a uh, company that we use to print our to produce our course packs and our readers through. They help us get copyright clearance if um, if that information is needed. Um, I think they're I think it's Lance and David is is the full name of it, but LAD is what it goes by. So it's just our printing company that we use currently. 
And, and I think in regular times, we might be looking at using our print shops, but because, because of COVID, um, all operations on our colleges are, are suspended. So we, we can't use the idea of, we can't go through the process of, of possibly using our, um, our college print shops for some of these things. We, we are going outside for that at this time. I think, I think once things get back to quote normal, uh, and that the print shop is is up and running. We might, I think, there'll be some reexamination of that. Yeah, and, one, and one, yeah, like I don't, I, I, I'm not sure, Sabrina. But one, one of the things that that, that Lad does or or Zana do is they, they do copyright clearance as well. Yeah. Yeah. And does Lad also do um, editing and and layout and so on? Because when I used to work in the science area, um, uh, the lab professors often put together manuals for their labs and and they were always looking for help on um, editing and formatting and that sort of thing. Is that one of the things that lab does? Um, not to my knowledge, I don't currently use lab, I mean sorry, lad. Um, I use Xanadu here at Sac State and we have mm. to provide them with like a PDF or a print version of it, we can tell them little things that we would like to have done. Um, we can send them multiple files and say, can you please put all of these um, like together in this order? Um, but I don't think that they go through it and make sure that like all the grammar and, and the on, the, on their um, readers. Uh, okay, so it has to be camera ready. Yeah, I would think. Okay, thanks. And um, if you want, I could have the um, textbook manager for your store follow up with that if you want. Um, would you like that? Actually, I'm no longer in the science area. I'm in math now, and, and that doesn't come up in math, but I was just curious just from past experience in the science area. We used to have a, a, a private contractor that did all that kind of work when I was in the science area. Okay, so, but that was independent of the print shop. It was something that the science area, they kind of, they had this uh, contracted editor kind of make it camera ready before it went to the print shop or, or an outside vendors. Is that correct? Well, the, the, the contractor actually did the printing as well and they would bring ah, the finished okay. packets to the campus. Okay. Is this Angie? Was that Angie? Uh, that's Martha. Okay. Martha Goff. Yeah, I work with Angie. <laughs> okay. I just wanted, I was just wondering who to follow up with. I just, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, and this this was this was a question that came up in the uh, yesterday's webinar as well as if you have a if you have a lab manual that you need for you know you you, you need for your class that is typically printed on on uh, at the campus print shop. So what what if if that was from prior prior terms? What what we did is, is during the transition, uh, the bookstore they gave the they gave list list of all those types of what whatever they had knowledge in they knowledge of they provided to the to um, the Polymer Course Materials Managers so they could, uh, you know, any PDFs that needed to be obtained, they could work with faculty. But if you, if you don't see that for your course, then, you know, please go ahead and follow up with the Course Materials Manager. We just want to make sure that all of those materials um, are available for students for fall. And so, that I'm not seeing any. Let me let me check the Q and A here. I think I think we answered all of them. And I'm not seeing any other questions come through. And did you have anything else that you wanted to to add? Uh, not that I can think of. No. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and. We'll end the webinar a little bit early, <laughs> and I'd just like to thank you know thank the the panel, Sabrina and, and Dan for for the, oh, oh we got one more question here we go all right go ahead Mark um, just a suggestion since you're having these webinar webinars over several days 
um, you might want to consider sending out an email that has a roundup of the, of the Q&As that came up at the different meetings and send them out to people so that some of these questions get answered and everyone knows the answer to them. Okay, yeah. That's a good, that's a good suggestion. Appreciate that. All right, well, thank you. Thank you all for attending. And yeah, just feel, feel yeah, follow up with any questions and, and, and feedback that you have. We appreciate it. And thank you for your presentation, Paul and Sabrina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.